Welcome, my sweet, wonderful friends, to another episode with me, Indiana Jones, and we will be crafting for Christmas in July. Yes, I realize there's record temperatures out there, but today we're going to stay nice and cool, and we're going to create some Christmas in July DIY projects. It's perfect to cool down, watch one of those Hallmark movies, and just get ready for the holiday season early this year. Let's go. Today I'm proud to say I'm part of this very special collaboration with these sweet friends, Aurea, Brenda, and Ray, and we've gotten together to fabricate our ideas. Now, I gave mine a Christmas theme. Can you guess what I'm making today? Well, let's not wait any longer and get started. Welcome once again to my channel. If you are new here, I must introduce you to my cat crafting companions, Luna, which you can see her little tail right there, and my little black cat, Guru. Now, if this is your first time here, you have to check out another video where I created a cliffhanger by sharing this thrift find. I found this wonderful sham in a thrift flip road trip, and I thought I was going to share this last week or in the last video, but I decided to save it for this project. So as you can see, I am creating a pillow sham stocking and I think this is going to be the perfect shabby chic stocking for Christmas don't you I mean look at the colors it is absolutely perfect so I've just created a I, I drew out a very basic stocking pattern this is such an easy project now because it only had one side the other side was kind of ripped the other side of the pillow sham I used some burlap fabric that I had and it was just very soft burlap fabric and um, it's almost like a muslin fabric but a little stiffer just to keep the weight of the stocking and I've put the the correct sides together which would be the outside and I am sewing with a quarter inch um, I guess a quarter inch uh, allotment a lot oh, I forgot the name of it you know what I mean it's not an allotment it's not like it's not like it's a property, but you know what I mean. It'll it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But there's little Kuru, and she's wondering what is Mama doing today. It has a she has a machine. She's very curious, and every so often, my um, string would fall to the floor. And there you have it. And can you see how absolutely perfect this is for a shabby chic Christmas? I again, I think there should be a Hallmark movie called Shabby Chic Christmas. And if there isn't, I guess I should write it. So now I'm using uh, the the edges of that pillow sham and I'm going to create the um, cuff of the stocking. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm talking really slow. But anyway, I'm creating the cuff of the stocking, which is easy enough to do. I cut it down to size and I'm going to be sewing it on. Now, it, very important with this project is to remember to so uh to you know pin things together first before you start sewing so i have turned it inside out once again i am going to sew on the edges there just to make sure and I, I was just making sure that the way i was pinning it together it was going to turn out to be a nice cuff for my stocking and as you see it will turn out just perfect now don't worry the rest of those uh, leftovers of this sham I will be using in other projects so stay tuned and if this is your first time here I would really like it if you can subscribe and come back for more and if you enjoyed this and I've inspired you or I've taught you something new well please go ahead and like and share so here I am finishing up up that cuff now I left this very simple if you know me you know me I like to embellish things a lot it's shabby chic I wanted to add lace but my friend jane hey jane if you're watching thank you for watching she came over saw it and she thought it was just lovely as it was she was mad that i i you know broke up the sham but it was only one sham and it was a, a shame it was a shameful sham to be alone not that you know it's just shameful to be alone ever but i thought it would be so much more beautiful and celebrated as a stocking i love it look at oh, i'm so happy happy dance happy dance around my stocking beautiful shabby chic stocking and all I'm doing here is adding a little loop so that I can hang it up when Christmas time is here so I hope if you look at uh, thrift stores and find a sham don't leave it alone bring it home and make a stocking out of it 
although I have a stash of fabric that would put anyone to shame, especially me, I just took advantage of some pillowcases that I had that were unpaired pillowcases, and this was one of them. And I love the embroidery on the cuff of this pillowcase, and I thought it would be perfect for a stocking, a very nice, you know, navy blue stocking. And navy blue is very popular this year for Christmas decor, from what I understand. And there's little Kuru, she's holding down the pattern and the fabric, making sure that I cut it just perfectly, just right. It is so much fun to craft with my little kitties. And uh, as you can see, they're very, very involved. To thank my little Kuru, of course I had to, well, first of all, I had to take pictures because she was looking so adorable and give her some cuddles, some little kitty cuddles. So after this break, we're going to continue. And once again, I'm going to use that pattern that I used before and just stitch uh, out the outside of my uh, stocking. Again, making sure that I try to make sure that I have a tight stitch so that it doesn't fall apart. Now, this fabric was a bit light, so I did create uh, a muslin or a burlap inside or interior or lining for this stocking so that it would be a little stiffer and that it could hold whatever items I would put into the stocking. Now, I don't know about you, but I continue with the stocking tradition here in my home. Even though both of my boys are big and grown, I still include lots of fun stuff in their stockings, whether it be candy or um, any kind of auto stuff that they can use for their car, any kind of fun stuff that I, I can find, I make sure to include it in their stocking. And they always look forward to their stocking, especially at the end of the day when they think they have nothing else left to open. They run straight to their stocking and find what else I have included there. So here I am just including the cuff as I did before, uh, turning the, the stocking inside out once it was done. And I am just stitching up the cuff and there you have it. And you can see right there the burlap interior of my stocking or the burlap, I guess, lining. Yes, the burlap lining. So now I put the burlap lining inside and look how beautiful is that. It looks something so cu custom. It looks very, you know, high end and something that you would probably find in the stores. Now, I forgot to say, you have to double up when you cut out your pattern. So, of course, you have two sides to your burlap um, stocking. And here, all I am doing is sewing both sides together. And I made sure to leave at the top the two inches open because we're going to flip those over and sew them on the other side. So, with burlap fabric, it's um, I don't know which side is the right side, but usually you sew the right sides together. So, the seams are in the inside. And here I am finishing off the top. And again, as I mentioned before, um, now, oh no, this is not the top, this is the heel. So I'm very careful at turning the heel to make sure that I don't get any wrinkles in my burlap. Next, I wanted to create another cottage core inspired stocking. And for this one, I'm going to use some uh, burlap from burlapfabric.com for all your burlap needs, yes. And all I'm doing is using one of those little cutting boards that you can get at the Dollar Tree and cutting it down to fit into the stocking because I'm going to use some stamping techniques and I don't want the paint to bleed to the other side of the stocking. I'm using that wonderful folk art color and it's like an evergreen color. It's absolutely perfect and I get these from Plaid. Plaid. I love to craft forever and I am a Plaid ambassador so they are very generous with their products. And I'm using IOD crockery stamps that I received from a dear friend of mine, Jackie. And I love these stamps. I've used them all throughout the year and it just made sense to use it now for my cottage core uh, stocking. And as you can see, it's very easy to do. I'm just painting on the paint to the stamp or using that little plate and just stamping them on, just making sure that I do it nice and even. And it's as easy as that. You can add as many crockery stamps as you want, or you can also embellish it with some stencils. Now I would continue stamping until I filled up my whole stocking. You can do however you'd like. You can also use stencils or um, anything else you want if you want to create your own stencils. But I really love the look of this burlap with all of these 
crockery stamps all over it. And then once I was done with this, now I have to work on the cuff. And what I did was I turned it inside out and I sewed it so that the edges, as you can see, you can't see the edges on the sides. Now I'm going to embellish it with this perfect uh, fringe that I had in my stash. And it is the absolute exact color of the sweater. Can you believe it? I know, incredible. And I, this time I'm just using some plastic that was actually around the roll of this um, trim and I'm putting it under the cuff so that I can just glue it on. I can sew it on, but at that point I was tired. It's very hard to sew sideways. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it's hard to sew sideways. So I decided to just glue it on to the edge and create my little embellishment for my crockery stamp uh, cottage core stocking. I think it came out great. And I hope you try this at home. It's so, so much fun. And it is a very different look if you haven't had this before in the cottage core in your own Christmas decor. There it is. I'm sure this has happened to you. You walk into an antique store and you see one of these vintage Victorian stockings for Christmas and wonder, ooh, that would be so adorable to have in my own decor. But then you look at the price and you're shocked. So you go online and try to buy a pattern, but once again, you see the price and you stay a little shocked. So I decided to create my own pattern and offer it to you for free for a vintage Victorian shabby chic stocking for your home decor. And there is a stocking cut out and all I did was use two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and stick them together or tape them together. Now I'm going to use this beautiful peacock blue color and it's just some satin that I happen to have in my stash. As you can see, I'm just using a very simple stitch to go all around. Now I will tell you, I did create an inner lining for this, but I cut off, and you're going to think it's strange, I cut off what is the toe and the heel, but you'll understand after this next step. So here I am just using a very simple stitch, making sure that there aren't any puckers or gathers as I go around the heel of this shoe. The heel is the most difficult part, I'll tell you, it is really hard and you have to make sure in the areas that uh, go around that you you cut little uh, divots I don't know what else to call it darts so that when you turn it inside out it keeps the beautiful shape that you have created and that you have sewn so now in the toe and the heel of this boot I am including or I am stuffing it with some cotton balls. That's all you really need. You don't need to buy any kind of fancy stuffing, just a few little cotton balls just to give it some shape. And as you can see, there is the lining sitting right beside um, my boot. So all I did is I used the same pattern and I cut off the boot, uh, heel and toe. And there you can see that I've already included the boot inner lining so that it doesn't go into the cotton balls. You understand what I'm saying, right? Like it's a sock within a sock, I guess. So here, all I'm doing is the embellishing. This is the most fun. Once you have your stocking done, just sit there, have, you know, a nice cup of tea or cocoa or, I don't know, I guess it's too hot because it's Christmas in July. So, uh, I don't know, have a cold uh, hot chocolate shake. You can have a hot chocolate shake. It's delicious, actually. A little bit, you know, of hot chocolate. And then, you know, you add some ice cream to it and a little bit of cinnamon. It's delicious. Anyway. Let's go on and continue adding this beautiful crystal fringe that, again, was part of my stash. And I'm going to continue adding, making it, I don't know why, I, I felt like a very Frenchy kind of color scheme with this blue and the, the faded gold. And now I'm going to add some gold trim. So just have fun with all the trim you have around the house. Just start gathering all your lace, all your trims, all your ribbons, and have fun with this. And again, you can create this in whichever color or style that you want. This would be beautiful as well if it's red satin or green satin or even black. Can you imagine black and gold and pink? It would be beautiful. And here I am creating. Um, now somehow it looks a little bit like a cowboy boot. I don't know. I think I made a mistake there, but I don't care. I think it looks cute anyway. So I continued with that same shape and added some pearls as well. Now here I am adding this trim that happens to have like interlocking pearls and ribbon. And I thought it would be perfect to create lacing up the front of the boot. I mean, after all, it's a Victorian boot. It has to have lacing. 
and I didn't want to have to, you know, create the holes and get the grommets out and all that stuff. So I'm using this beautiful trim as my lacing. My lacing? I guess it's lacing. My eyelets. My, yeah, my eyelets. Eyelets? Eye holes? I don't know what it's called. You know what I'm talking about. And I was having a bit of a difficult time until I decided to stuff my boot with one of those rolls of uh, mesh uh, ribbon and that's what helped me to get the ribboning or the lacing all the way up my boot and i'm just i fell in love with this oh so 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 much so again you can create all different colors you can create it in different colors for can you imagine giving this to your friends to your girlfriends what fun or if you have like a, a christmas wedding coming up giving this it to your friends and you know as like and have like I don't know little liquor bottles and stuff in there for the bridal shower I think that would be so much fun so here I am just lacing up and making a bow at the top of my boot I had so much fun with this guys can you tell I just oh and so I, I just kept saying okay am I adding too much that's my biggest problem you know with shabby chic it's like it's is it ever too much maybe Sometimes, I don't know, because, you know, you don't want to make it tacky. So here I'm adding a little bit of a lacy flower to the front of my boot. I thought that was perfect. And then at the top of my boot, I thought it needed some more decor. I wasn't just going to plop that pin right there and, and leave it be. So I decided to create a bit of a flourish with the same fabric as the boot itself. And there you see, it's, I, I don't know, I thought it made it look very French with this, for some reason, very oof, ooh la la. So here I have my little um, fabric flower that I'm going to attach to the cuff of my boot. And then of course, using some totally dazzling, cause it's totally dazzling. It's totally dazzled actually. And uh, yes, now is the time people, if you're going to get ready for a shabby chic Christmas, check out totally dazzled and be totally dazzling for christmas this year and there you have it my beautiful vintage victorian boot just for you so let's put it all together thank you once again to my sweet friends for inviting me to collaborate with them on this fabricate your ideas playlist aurea brenda and ray please remember to visit their channels and if you want more inspiration of how to use fabric in creative and fun ways remember to check out the full playlist thank you all once again for stopping by and for sharing with me all of your wonderful supportive words i'm getting close to 16,000 subscribers so please remember to like share and subscribe and as i always say stay safe be kind god bless each and every one of you and remember to live the adventure and make life beautiful today i'll see you again soon